Hello fellow old schoolers. Now I'm sorry that as it's been such a long while uh, between my videos but it's, things have just been crazy busy here. But uh, yeah, I am still playing and um, in a while I'll be posting uh, a recent event called the Eel Castle Cup where um, I'll have a camera set up there and Simon my friend will send me some of the videos. We'll see a screenshot of it here. Um, but in the meantime, I have, there have been some clamorings for some more Demon Engine on this channel and I thought this might be a good occasion to put some of those videos up. I went to a small tournament with some of my childhood buddies uh, uh, piloting the Demon Engine against various decks and I thought that I would yeah, just post uh, those matches here. So without further ado, this is a mini tournament with the Spicy Brew, the Demon Engine, coming up against various decks. Let's go over the decks real quick here. Now, if you want a more in-depth view of this deck, there's an entire video on this channel dedicated to that. But it is a spicy brew uh, revolving around Yakmoth priests, sacrificing robots to pump out even more robots and also to cast Yakmoth demons that are that uh, sinister um, ghost in the shell, I suppose, that uh, demon possessing the engine. Um, we'll get a lot of mana out of those robots when we sack them and they'll be sacked after they've spent their counters so we'll have tetravi splitting up into smaller uh, tetravi and then sacking the main one for six black mana. Uh, if we sack sushis uh, we'll get four black mana and four colorless mana and they can be pumped into those uh, carrion ants over there uh, for big bursts of damage and also the drain life. Um, we also have a royal assassin with icy manipulators obviously an enemy dead to get the robots right back in. We can also copy them um, the deck is uh, primarily black but with a splash of blue for copy artifacts and the, uh, the blue power and uh, the brain geyser. We also have a, a pestilence in there uh, by the way. Um, there's a stronger version of this on the channel where I play red with it as well so we can actually use those robots for giant fireballs and big bursts of damage but in this one it's uh, more spicy with dumping that mana into carrion ants and drain life. For sideboard we also have uh, a Greed and Ivory Towers and combined with the uh, Diamond Valleys in this deck we'll get a lot of life and that life can be converted into more card draws. Um, yeah, that's about it. This is uh, obviously not tournament ready but just, just a fun little brew. For my opponent, we have it here. That is uh, the first round uh, in this tournament I was coming up against the Mono Green Stompy Arts type. It's definitely a lethal little brew here. We have a lot of uh, elves uh, to, ha to uh, help the big beaters out. Then we have Urnabjans, two force of natures, three giant spiders behind that um, if be freed, uh, Wolui wolves, trackers, and uh, yeah, just a w bunch of 1 1 critters, scavenger folks to blow up artifacts, a single book to get additional draws in. We also have some direct damage here using uh, storm seekers and we have a civil library and a regrowth. Obviously, a bunch of giant growth and berserks here. That is the mainstay of this archetype. It's like trying to overrun the opponent with a bunch of small little critters, just overwhelming them with um, and making them huge with giant growth and berserks. That is the first round of this tournament. Can the ghost in the shell, the demon engine, overcome this wild jungle opponent here? We shall see. This is round number one. So we have me on that good old Sorcerer's Queen playmat on the right there, and Rasmus on that Red Dragon playmat. So we're having a roll off for who gets to start here, both rolling three as a one. So he's on the play should be advantage to him, right? Uh, he wants to overwhelm me early on with all those little critters, so it will be an advantage for him to start. No one drop though, just a single forest coming out. Oh, and what do we have here? Oh, it's a priest. That's one too, so I can actually block elves with that in the beginning. Just need to survive the early game here. Okay, there's a Volui wolf coming out here. Uh, it can tap to give another creature plus one, plus one. Uh, functioning sort of like a missus factory. Do it as a fast effect, very good with Berserks when you double it afterwards and uh, yeah, just a nifty creature really. Strip mine coming out, nothing out of uh, Demon Engine yet. Ooh, as a tracker, that's that's really bad. I need to handle, okay, I'll oh, terrorizing it here. Otherwise you could track down all my priests with that. It's a 2-2. Two, two. 
Okay, sushi coming out. Fist. Aggression out of the demon engine. I can also sack that for four black mana and four colorless mana. Answers with an Unum Jin. Four five creature. I can block that sushi all day. Uh, so, can't really get in. And he'll just give my priest forest walk. Mana Vault coming out here. They're nice in this deck as well because I can tap them and then sack them. Okay, second the sushi. Four colorless mana and four black mana. That's eight mana. Ooh, tapping the mana bolt here. Ah, oh, just exploding onto the table. That's what the demon engine can do. <laughs> just Gillen and Tetravis coming out. In turn three here. <laughs> That's brutal. Pumped out by that uh, priest and sushi combination. Really putting the pressure on him here. So we little elf. Though mind you, that Wolui Wolf um, is a bit annoying because I can't shoot his 1-1 creatures uh, with a Trisk. And uh, another one. Uh, because he'll just tap to give it plus 1, plus 1, and I'll have to use two counters. Uh, that's that's a bad deal. Usually, and he can actually... Now he has two wolves, so in his next upkeep, uh, he can completely shut down my, my Trisk's guns with those wolves. Okay, attacking with Yurnam Jin here, that's a bit surprising. Um, I can't I can't block and shoot it, uh, because he'll just pump it with the wolf. I can, I can shoot it twice, but... I'm just letting it in, though. It's a bit surprising, because I can now counter-attack. Oh, but I'm splitting the Tetravi up here. Uh, so I can now sack the, the main to Travis for 6 black mana. And uh, the counters will still be in play. They do have summoning sickness, though. They can't attack this turn. Only the main uh, to Travis can. But I'm gearing up, likely, for another sacrifice maneuver here. Okay, just coming up, coming over with that little flying 1 1 creature now. Putting out something here. That's a bit annoying. We can't really see it. Um, now, later on. Um, in the Eel Castle Cup, it will be a, a bit more professional, I suppose, where everything is on is on the screen. But uh, here it was just a, like a spontaneous uh, recording, so um, some of this stuff might be outside. Uh, it's better than nothing, right? Another Unumjin coming out here, so you can now block the Trisk and attacking with the Unumjin without summoning sickness. Yeah, uh, it's a real question here what to do. And he's also attacking with the elf, and he can he can pump them with the with the wolves. But if you tap out, if he taps the wolves, uh, I'll blow the wolves up with the trisk. So it's a Mexican standoff here, because then he can't use them to counteract my triskillion. So I'll just shoot whatever isn't pumped. But still, he can pump that elf. So if I block with the with the priest. Um, he can pump it with a wolf and become a 2-2. Two, two. And he might also have giant growth. There's a single green mana up here. He likely has. He has four in that deck. And as Stompy usually plays with giant growth, I know at this point that that's the risk. And this might be a bluff, but there's always the threat of that giant growth. So it gets a bit tricky here because right uh, outside the camera angle is a sushi. And um, I'm blocking with that. And a couple of uh, Tetravi counters, I'm blocking one of the Unum Jins with that. And then the third uh, Tetravi counter is blocking the Elf. Now, he wants to pump the Unum Jin to make it survive, but I remind him that if he does that, I can actually shoot as a response before it takes effect and shoot the Unum Jin down, or, and then afterwards shoot the Wolves. So he only taps one of them to pump the Unum Jin. Then I shoot, then he giant growths it. So, yeah, um, playing like this actually forces him to use it, the giant growth because uh, they would have done uh, six damage to the Unum Gen otherwise. And then he pumps the other elf. And I shoot the elf. Um, that's a bit weird. I could have. Um, could have shot the wolves instead. I think that would have been better. I am electing to keep. Yeah, the sushi dies here. I, I am electing to uh, to keep the main Tetravus, the tapped one here. Planning to sacrifice it to the priest, likely, uh, for six black mana. Or maybe copy it with a copy artifact. 
So, seems like I'm losing a Sushi and two Chachavai counters, and he lost an Elf. Okay, uh, a bit of a discussion here, back and forth with the mechanics of it. Can't really remember this, but... Yeah, if, if he pumps one more time with the final wolf, I'll just shoot again, and then I'll start shooting the wolves. I suppose. So, I am on the back foot here. 4-4 um, four, four robots are not that great against a 4-5 Enumgen, or not against 2 uh, either. Untapping the Mana Vault here before I draw. Something the workshop to put down another mana vault. So a lot of colorless mana here. Flying in, attacking for good measure here. I don't want to sacrifice it, I suppose. Hmm. Then shooting the wolf, and he taps it for plus one, plus one, and I shoot it again. Not really sure what I'm why I'm doing these things. Maybe I have something in hand. Still, staring down to an audience, not the best situation. And he's just providing forest walk to my f little flyer. So it doesn't really change anything. That drawback the Anamjens has, um, yeah, he can just select my flyer. Now double attacking here. Okay, that, that's why I shot all the counters, I suppose, before it was his turn. Otherwise, he would just pump uh, his stuff uh, in his own turn. So I'm blocking one of the Onobjans with that depleted Triskillion. And it goes straight into a pile of rubble here. Or uh, bent metal. I really need to draw something here. Another tiny elf and the Onobjan comes... Straight over you get again just to pay me another visit. I'd like to take it on the chin here. Down to four points of life, really. No, okay, I'm I'm activating a factory and getting in the way of one of them. Okay, he he pumps it though. So seven life left. Again attacking with a little flyer. Okay, I'm time walking. Might as well attack then, I think. Oh, and Sister Recall. Blue power, man. Right in succession. Okay, that's a copy artifact. So, we have a, a big guy here. And another little priest, I suppose. He can serve as a blocker against the Unamjans. Should attack here with the 1-1 one, one flyer. Uh, maybe I'm considering just putting it in the way. Yeah, I am. Oh, he dropped an icy manipulator, and he has an elf to use it. He'll likely just tap down my my Tetravus. I think they're going from bad to worse. I remember after this tournament, I I purchased a uh, gate to Phyrexia so I can get rid of uh, artifacts with this deck, but I don't have it in this deck. It was before I owned one. Okay, he taps down my, my Tetravus, attacks all his stuff. I'm blocking both Enumgens. And uh, that's it. Yeah, the, the tap delve, re remember, he was used to um, fuel that icy manipulator. So he didn't attack. So, yeah, still surviving here on seven points of life. Tapping the Mana Vault. Ooh, sacrificing the Mana Vault. For black mana and then getting down. <laughs> Yakbuth Demon. The guard of this deck. 6-6 six, six, flying first strike. Right in the nick of time, coming to save the day here. Maybe it's too little too late. And I've split up the other two Travis. All the counters are out, so I have a bunch of 1-1 one, one counters again. So I can't block a bunch of stuff and mind you 
even if he casts Berserk, Berserk on those Enumgents, um, because the Yakmoth Demon has First Strike, uh, the Berserk doesn't apply. He will punch the Enumgent down before um, the Berserk takes effect. But I suppose a Giant Growth will help him. He can give an Enumgen 6 in toughness, but it won't be enough. Uh, oh, uh, okay, yeah. As said, this was just a spontaneous recording here and the camera fell. I think the other videos um, will have cleared it up, but the angle in this first video is not very good. I hope, I hope you'll excuse this. Okay, tagging with both Unumjins here, and as I remember, I blocked it with the uh, Yakmoth uh, Demon and three counters, just to provide it nine points of damage. Just in this case, because we have a giant growth here, and he can pump it with the Wolf, um, making that Unumjin have nine in toughness if needs be. Uh, yeah, he taps it here, but it doesn't matter. I think uh, the Yakmoth Demon and all the counters um, made short work of him. At least I put him down with me. Uh, but that giant spider gets out here. Rare sight indeed in these types of tournament decks, but it is a rather nifty green creature. Uh, a great option against uh, hypnotic spectres and stuff like that. Um, untapping the Mana Vault, I considered sacrificing it with the Yakmoth Priest, but thought better of it. Now tapping the Underground Sea and the Mana Vault, just cutting his hand with a Mind Twist. Not really what I needed here. He has plenty of stuff on the table uh, to finish this game. And that Icy, uh, yeah, he just taps down my, my flyer, comes in with an Unumgen and a Giant Spider. Still have one counter left, it seems, blocking the Unumgen likely. And he pumps the Spider, doing three points of damage to me. Okay, <laughs> gotta pray for a miracle here. Um... Wrath of God would help, but obviously I don't play with that, being primarily a black deck with a blue splash here. Um, I think I'm considering untipping the Mana Vault. It's in my upkeep. Okay, electing to make it do a point of damage, I need all the colored mana I have. Got nothing though, just a blue mox. That's game, Stumpy takes the first one here in this tournament match. Demon Engine needs to... Have a comeback here or it's curtain call real soon. So round number two after sideboard. Starting out with a mana vault. Turn one here. And he has a factory. Slow and steady start from him. Answered with a blocking factory from my on my side. Another factory gets down. So we can pump his later on. Bunch of mana early on for Demon Engine, but nothing to cast here. Could play a robot, even a Triskillion at this point, but doesn't seem like I have it. A Pendlehaven gets out of Stompy here. Now he can attack and pump his factory into a 3-3 and I can block and pump my factory into a 3-3 as well. So it's kind of even Steven here. He might choose to trade though. He doesn't require as much mana as I do. Okay, so he attacks with his factory using the mana from the Pendlehaven. We have a bit of a discussion here. I'm blocking. Pumps, I pump. Okay, we trade factories. Okay. Makes sense. Now he can get in with impunity if he wants to. Island coming out here. Nothing out of the demon engine yet. Oh, life force. That must have been a sideboarded card here. I have a death grip in my sideboard. So <laughs> we could actually shut each other down pretty easily, but he got the life force first here. I diamond valley out of the demon engine here. And there's a Trisk. Using the mana vault to pay for it. Again, it's outside the camera angle. Future videos should have mitigated this problem, but it is what it is. I see coming down. And I said I can't really touch those artifacts even after sideboard. Not in this uh, iteration. Sorrowing. That I see is real trouble. Still attacking with the Trisk, I can still do that. Ooh, getting out of Pestilence here, and he can't counter it with his life force because um, he was tapped out at this point. 
So we can actually have a burn strategy here. Um, attacking and after the attack burning for 3 each turn with that pestilence. Oh, only 2 because I only have 2 black manas, but still. It'll all add up and the Triskelion can shoot its guns at the end. Okay, he counterattacks with his factory recognizing that uh, that this might be a race. Getting 2 points of damage in. Using the Sol Ring and the 2 black mana to untap the, the mana vault. I don't want to take any unnecessary damage at this point. Attacking with the uh, Triskelion. Ooh, and copying the Triskelion here. So that's six points of damage on the table al already. A lot of guns backed up by a Pestilence. Black Robot Burn. Something we don't see every day. Hmm, yeah, a bit of a pickle for him. I don't think that life force is such a big problem for me uh, because of all the artifacts, but still, it's annoying. Gets a tracker out. Okay. Oh yeah, and I even have that diamond valley to uh, to eat one of the one of the trisks if needs be. Okay, electing to keep the mana vault tapped, taking a point of damage here. Must have a plan with that. For some reason, I want my my colored mana not untapped. Maybe it's pestilence time. Oh, yeah, I I think I understand now. I'm burning with the pestilence, removing the blocker. We both take two points of damage, and that will transfer itself into a lot of unblocked damage on him. He taps one of the trisks though uh, in my attack step, and I and I just get in with the with the other one. Otherwise he would have just jump blocked with his tracker and uh, yeah, this way he takes six points of damage in this turn. Oh, and he elects to berserk the attacking Trisk just to get rid of it. I mean it will do a bunch of damage to him but um, But it will get destroyed at the end. We're down to six points of life here. But I only have one Triskelion left, and uh, he has an IC to handle that. He can even tap the IC at my end step and then get in with his own factory. So, I think that was the correct play. Mm. Oh, yeah, except that that pestilence might do him in actually. Gets done a giant spider instead. Okay, I'm still taking a point of damage from the tap mana vault. Doesn't really matter. Oh, Black Lotus. Cracking that for black mana. Five points of damage. And then shooting him with the Triskelion. Bam. <laughs> black burn. So, that was uh, the plan, I guess. Um, yep. Pestilence, man. It's a cool, cool card. So, it's 1-1. Uh, and we're going into the final match of this of this um, first bout of the tournament. We'll get to sideboard one last time and um, then we'll see who will get out on top. Let's get ready for round number three. I can't re really remember what I sideboarded in, um, but I, I bet it's a death grip. Okay, he's on the play. Factory and a green mox here. Nice start from him. A lot of tempo. And I have a mana vault and a factory. Ooh, a tracker. So if I activate the factory... Ooh, but an insist to recall. If I activate the factory, you can actually track it down with the dragger, I suppose. Especially if I'm... If I have summoning sickness. Otherwise, I'll just tap my factory to... Um, pump itself and make it survive. Okay, but we got an ancestor recall here. Saving the mana vault for Chaos Orb. It didn't activate it. Why was that so important? 
That's a weird play. Oh, I'm keeping the factory up. So if he attacks with his tracker and his factory, I can chaos up one of them. But still, I have a tap mana bolt now and I, can, and I can't even untap it. I think that's an odd play. Trying, I suppose I'm trying to hold him back. Um, it's a fail safe if he starts to get in and casts uh, giant growths and berserks as this archetype tends to do. Uh, I'll be able to chaos orb and just stop him straight out. So I guess that's the reason I need that chaos orb out pretty early on uh, as an emergency break on the game if he really if he really goes nuts on me here. And with a full fist of cards, a lot of green mana, I suppose it makes kind of sense even though there's a tap mana bolt as a result from it. He attacks with everything, I let it in. Four points of damage. No giant growth. He doesn't dare to. If he casts giant, giant growth, I'll chaos up the, the target. But I'm still taking a point of damage from the uh, tap mana bolt. Can't untap it yet. Having a land drop outside the camera angle here. Oh, and then casting Time Walk. Taking another point of damage from that tap mana bolt. Another draw, another lane, lane drop, most likely. Yep, a second factory. I'm trying to pull ahead here because he's definitely needed the beat down. He wants to rush me down before I get the big beaters out. Even though he can still punch big with the Unamjins and Giant Spiders, but still, um, it's the early damage here. I want the defense is up as early as possible, so using the time walk uh, early on here. I don't need to use it for attack. Um, if I was coming up against a control deck, I might I might save it for getting to attack twice instead. Oh, and if Biffy freed three three flying, and he can it's just like a living hurricane. He can pump green mana, or we can both pump green mana into it, and. Um, It'll function sort of like the Pestilence, and I don't want that. I'm actually chaos orbing it here. Let's see if it hits. Yep. <laughs> Could barely make it out. Um, because otherwise he'll just start to burn me down. Uh, I mean, I've, I've recently just done that with him, with the Pestilence. And he could just keep up the attack and... Um, and just burn. Burn for two each turn with that Ifrit. He can't pump it for more than two because otherwise it, Ifrit will die from its own hurricane as it is a flyer. Okay, Demonic Tutor here. Really on the back foot, what should you pick here? I mean, it's not not, not any huge threats, but Factories, Tracker. Hmm, I might be able to keep it back actually. The Insistent Recall has been used and so has a Time Walk, so I might just take a, a Mind Twist and just try to Take the wind out of his sails, so to speak. I am taking a ton of damage from that mana vault though. And if I tap out to mind twist him, um, I'll be a sitting duck because I'll have to tap my factories. Depending on how many cards he has in hand. Another land drop. I am sorry, it's, it's difficult to see here. Okay, just... Drain lifing for two, that tracker. Okay, slowly pulling ahead here, getting two points of life, and uh, he loses one of his blockers, so attack us here. Another factory though, so he keeps up the pressure. Two factories for two factories. If I tap out, it's four points of damage straight to the dome from those factories. I, I can't, I don't have any colors I can bolt them or remove them in any way. As a, as a fast effect. So he attacks with the factory. I only have two mana up, I think. Only the factory's up. Okay, so I block with one. His other factory has summoning sickness, so... Um, won't 
be able to pump it. I'm anticipating a giant growth here. Nope, I'm pumping it. Wait, what? Shouldn't be able to pump it. Didn't he play that factory this turn? He did. He should have had summoning sickness and couldn't pump the other, but he berserks. It's a mistake here, but he berserks uh, the attacking factory. So it, become, it has six in power uh, because it's mistakenly pumped by the other factory, trampling down my blocking factory and do, doing three points of damage. I mean, the end result here would be slightly... Um, if we had played it correctly, it wouldn't be pumped. It would still kill my factory. I would only have taken one point of damage instead of three. But that's the only change there is. Triskillian coming out here, and I took a point of damage from that tap mana bolt. There's the life force. I mean, it is kind of annoying. Here's two green cards up. Um, so drain lives and stuff like that are out of the question here. I'll have to make do with that one robot. I have to untap the mana bolt, though. Yeah, I attack here. Thing is, I can still tap with my uh, block with my factories. Um, so and I and I need to put a herd on him. Uh, I'm down to ten points of life here. He cast something with green. Did he berserk my Trisk one more time? Yep, he did. Trisk does eight points of damage and <laughs> gets him really angry and then stomps into the graveyard. Fizzles out, I suppose. All the gears and and knots have been overworked. But there's another Triskillian coming down. Factory is full in effect here. I think that's a force of nature. <laughs> Just outside the camera angle, it's so cool. Uh, look at the mana he, he taps here. 8-8 eight, eight, Tremble. I, I remember uh, from the deck picture that he plays with them. I mean, it will lock down his uh, oh animating undead robot here. Uh, mainly, I can shoot for six. I mean, I can't really attack because the, fo the force of nature will just crumple the robot with his big hands. But oh, we're getting out some getting out some hands here. <laughs> this is such a weird game. Cards you don't see every day. Kind of cool. I mean, I I can pump that end into a a huge army of little critters and they might even overpower um, the force of nature actually um, they cost two black mana and two colorless mana and uh, it's a zero one little ant but you can i can pump it uh, oh he makes the force of nature do eight points of damage to him he doesn't choose to pay for its upkeep that why I, I can just shoot him with the Trisks then. I tell him here, uh, are you sure you want to do that, buddy? Uh, I'll, I'll just shoot you. And, okay, we give him a do-over here. It would be a, a weak way to win. Ooh, Tranquility. Okay, losing life force, but I'm losing the enemy dead as well. And he's completely tapped out. But I mean, yeah, if I if I <laughs> let him uh, just take the damage from the force of nature, the Trisks could just uh, kill him. Oh, there's an icy outside the camera angle here. So I'm pumping the ants to a huge ant and getting in. That's game. <laughs> One with a carrion end. Huge carrion end at that. Um, so, yeah. I mean, 2-1 to one for the opening tournament match here. Winning with a carrion end. I think that's a first on this channel. Um, I'm sorry about the weird camera angle in this first video. Um, hopefully, they'll be rectified um, in future uploads. And uh, in any event, when we get into the long... I mean, the Electric Eel Cup. Uh, the the more serious tournament uh, it would be a camera hanging from the ceiling so there won't be any issues with the angle there in any case i hope you enjoyed this if you like more videos like this do be sure to do all those uh, youtube pleasantries please uh, 
like liking and subscribing and uh, maybe making a comment. Uh, and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one. Karen Ants for the win. Take care out there.